Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to cover the structure and function of the energy transformers, otherwise known as mitochondria and chloroplasts. We're going to start with the mitochondrion, and the structure of the mitochondrion is basically shaped like a peanut or a tic tac. It's got an outer membrane that's surrounding an inner membrane that is folded up. Okay, so the mitochondrion has an inner area and then an outer inner area inside of these two membranes. And the function of the mitochondria is literally to burn food energy to release energy that the cell can use to do work. So what the mitochondria is really doing, it is converting or transforming food energy into a type of energy called ATP. And ATP energy is the energy that all cells, from bacteria to plants to animals, everything, everything uses ATP to do work. Okay, to do the work that the cell needs to stay alive, reproduce, repair, and perform its functions or its jobs. And to do this, the mitochondria needs, needs oxygen. Okay, so the mitochondria has to take in oxygen and food, and it can then make ATP energy from these two um, reactants. Um, here is a transmission electron microscope picture of an actual mitochondria from an animal cell. And you can see in this picture, it's got an outer layer. Okay, and then it's got an inner layer that is much folded. But because it's a, this is a really thin slice of a mitochondrion, it's harder to see the folds. But believe me, they're there. Now, I made a little animation here to show you what I'm talking about. Um, the analogy for mitochondria that you probably have already heard, are, of course, the word mitochondria is plural for mitochondrion, okay, is the power plant of the cell. And they're called this because they produce ATP energy. Okay, and all cells need ATP energy to stay alive and do their jobs. Okay, and in order to make ATP energy, the mitochondria needs two reactants. It needs food and it needs oxygen. And it can then process food and oxygen into ATP energy. So let me show you this little animation. So here we have uh, the two things the cell needs to t this uh, mitochondria needs to take in. Food and oxygen. Alright, so we're going to see them going into the mitochondria and they're going to be converted into ATP energy and a waste gas called carbon dioxide, which are going to leave the mitochondrion. So I'm hoping you see that the mitochondrion is an energy converter or transformer because it transforms food energy into ATP energy. And this is the most important product probably that a cell needs from second to second to stay alive. Now another analogy you may have heard the idea of mitochondria being like a power plant. Okay, this power plant is burning coal and it's converting the coal into heat. The heat's being used to boil water. The steam from the boiled water is being used to make a turbine spin and the spinning turbine is generating electricity. So just as this power plant is taking in um, energy in the form of coal, okay, a popular fossil fuel, especially here in Virginia, and it is putting out when it's all said and done, electricity. Okay, and in the process of making electricity, it's also putting out a waste gas, carbon dioxide, which is mixed into the smoke here coming out of the stacks. So I think you guys get the idea. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the other transformer inside of some eukaryote cells called plant cells are chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are only found in plant cells. Animal cells do not have them. The structure is very similar to a mitochondrion you have an outer membrane surrounding an inner membrane, and this inner membrane is, is um, folded into stacks. Okay, They kind of look like green pennies. And you can see them in here. So this is a stack of that inner membrane okay, folded up, and they're interconnected. The function of the chloroplast is to capture light energy and release this energy in a form that the cell can use to do work. So what a chloroplast is doing, just like with the mitochondria, is it's converting one energy into another kind of energy. So in this case, a chloroplast is converting light energy into ATP energy and food energy. And in order to do this, it needs water and carbon dioxide. All right, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, first of all, this is a transmission electron microscope photograph of an actual mitochondrion. And these very fine structures here are the stacks of that inner folded membrane that I was telling you about earlier. And this is the part of the plant that's actually very bright green. Uh, these, this, this is where the chlorophyll is located. Okay, so we have a pigment in here called chlorophyll. Almost ran out of space here, which is the pigment that 
um, plants use to um, capture light energy. All right, now another animation. Uh, a frequent analogy used for chloroplasts is that they are energy transformers or power plants. But in this case, the chloroplast is going to take in light energy. So coming in to the chloroplast is going to be energy from the sun, okay? otherwise known as sunlight. Okay? And this energy is going to be used to, to transform water and carbon dioxide into food and in the process make some ATP also. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So water and carbon dioxide enter along with the sunlight and what you get out is ATP energy and the simplest form of food energy, glucose. Remember that monosaccharide glucose? And we also get ATP energy. And just as with the mitochondria, cells need ATP energy to do their work. So plants can make their own ATP directly from sunlight to do their work. Plus, they can store some of the energy from ATP in a form that they can sock away or store away called glucose. And this is why plants are producers, because they're producing the stored energy food, which can then be passed through a food chain or a food web to all the consumers. All right, so you can think of a chloroplast as a power plant also, but it's a power plant that's running on sunlight. Okay, so I found this picture of some uh, photovoltaic panels or some solar panels that are using chemistry to, and physics to collect light energy and convert it directly into electricity for um, a power plant that runs on the sun. Okay, chloroplasts and mitochondria are both energy transformers. Okay, they're called energy transformers because they take in one form of energy and release that same energy in another form. Because remember, you can't create or destroy energy in physics. That's a physics law. So let's summarize that right here. So here is a mitochondria. And remember, mitochondria take in energy in what form? Okay, it is food. And they output energy in the form of ATP. Okay, there's some other stuff going on, but that's the most important. Chloroplasts don't take in food energy. Do you remember what kind of energy they take in? Light. And they also put out ATP. And they can also convert that ATP into food energy or glucose. And you can see that that food energy can then be run through a mitochondria, which plants have also. Because plants have mitochondria. So plants can make their own food and then consume it with their mitochondria. So they kind of have the best of both worlds. They are producers, and they can consume the own, the, their own food. Whereas consumers like us or other animals, we have to eat plants because we don't have the ability to make our own food because we don't have the ability to capture sunlight energy. All right, we'll stop there. The next video cast, we'll talk about ribosomes. Thanks for listening.